All right, so um, um, this is Ali, Ali Murtaza Musui. Um, I'm from 12C, and I'm gonna be, um, I, I'm gonna be the first speaker for uh, for the topic today. Thank you. Shashwat, you are the next. Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, my name is Shashwat Lohia. I am from 12B. I'm studying commerce, and uh, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, the Hamza, team uh, Hamza, I think your mic is muted. Hamza, I think your mic is muted. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah. Um, I, my name is Hamza Haider. I'm from class 12B. I will be speaking for the topic today. And uh, say excited to be here, too. Uh, hi. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Aditi J from class 12B. And I'm going, even I'm going to speak uh, for the topic. And I'm looking forward to it. Hello, good evening. Uh, I am Sahaj from class 12B. I am also going to speak for the topic, and I'm looking ahead to it. Hello. Uh, Hi, I'm Iman, and I'll be going against the topic today, and I'm really looking forward to this. Thank you. Uh, hello, this is Anil Reddy of Class 12B. I will be speaking against the topic for today. Good evening, everybody. I'm Shiva of Class 11B. I will be speaking against the topic today, and I'm looking forward to it. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sairam Patnam. Uh, I'm studying 11A. I'm going against the topic, and I'm looking forward to it. So far, so far, I so, have Ali, Shashwat, Aditi, and Sahaj who are speaking for Hamza, Iman, Anirudh, Shiva, and Sai speaking know. again. Uh, I'm Hamza, ma'am. I'm speaking for the topic, ma'am. Okay, sorry. Uh, ma'am, put it in the chat. Who are for the topic? So the rest would be okay. Thanks. In a chronological order. So in total, I have five people speaking for and four people speaking against. Yes, ma'am. Right. Chashwat, four starts first. Ah, so first should slide. we start? Yeah. Uh, All right. Okay, I'm starting on them. So um, in... In 380 BC, Plato, one of the most influential political philosophers, had written a book called As the Republic. In that book, Socrates, Plato, through Socrates, asks his friend, Thrasymachus, that what is justice? He replies by saying that justice is nothing else than the interest of the stronger. Honorable judges, fellow debaters, and all the spectators present, in today's world, justice has been limited only to the privileged class. Yes, we have laws. Yes, we have rules. Yes, we have legislations. Yes, we have judicial and legal processes. But, but all these apply, but all these legal and judicial processes apply only to the poor and underprivileged class of the society. The delivery of justice decreases from the privileged to the less privileged class. And the existence of laws, rules, and legal processes increases when you when you go down from the privileged class to the less privileged class. Honorable judge, laws should act as a facilitator and not as a speed breaker to justice. But then when we look around in our society, 
the exact opposite is to be seen today in india more than 59000 cases are pending in supreme court more than 44.75 lakh cases are pending in high court and more than 3.14 crore cases are pending in district courts is this what so many laws have given to us is this is what so many legal processes have given to us honorable honorable ma'am there are so many laws today that everything we do anything and everything we do we touch we say or we perform has a legal aspect to it if we take the sedition law for example the sedition law was introduced by britishers in india the britishers themselves abolished this law in the british parliament but then this but then this bill still uh, exists in uh, in india why do we need such unnecessary laws in india any more we are talking uh, we are here we talk about law and justice now let us recall the nirbhaya case a poor 26 year old medical student gang raped by six men the six men were arrested and convicted but still but still it took 8 years 8 years for the indian judiciary to hang those accused men and guess what when were these when were these convicts hanged these convicts were hanged just before the rajya sabha elections adding a political flavor to it adding a political twist to it ma'am if it, there are so many laws and so many norms with long and cumbersome processes that even if a person faces injustice he prefers not to approach the court for for justice with the simple reason the entire process being a very long cumbersome and and a completely corrupt process i would just like to conclude by saying that if it takes 8 years for gang rape convicts to be hanged then the statement more loss and less justice is very much justified thank you um, hi ali uh, i have a question for you so when you said that uh, you know it takes very long to uh, you know it takes very long to get you know uh, in the legal process to get justice in our country number one i'd like to ask, ask you what would be the solution uh, solution that you would provide and second don't you think we need more laws to help these underprivileged people people and fast forward the fast forward these legal processes yeah all right first of all your first question what what kya uh, kehte uh, what will be the solution iman today in india's uh, in, in the indian budget only 0.3% of the gdp is spent on judiciary how about increasing that budget how about spending more on judiciary how about spending more on uh, on legal studies how about promoting more judges how about promoting and building more courts at district level at state level and both and even at the center level and trying to spend and trying to finish all these pending cases since years and decades that will be my first solution your second question was how how can we help the underprivileged how can we the the entire system being corrupt in itself is a main reason for these underprivileged class being deprived of their justice how about correcting how about cleaning the entire system and this system cannot be cleaned from you know by uh, uh, at a root at a you know a uh, grassroots level it should start at the from the top right from the prime minister's office to the peasant's house the the system is has been is been corrupt uh, is corrupt the minute we start changing the changing the laws the legislations at the center level from the parliament the underprivileged class themselves will see a change and themselves will uh, get justice thank you uh, sir i'm so sorry uh, uh, okay go i'd like to interrupt please. Uh, please stick to english when you are talking thank you it's somebody said kya kehte hai i think something like that okay so uh, ali uh, how does this still guarantee by increasing the budget don't you think it will still fill the pockets of politicians how does this still guarantee faster legal processes because we do have courts at the lower level yeah we do have courts at uh, lower level we do have courts at state level but we don't have enough court uh, enough courts at both state and uh, lower level how about just uh, even if you take the case study of uh, i think uh, this country in south america where uh, where the number of courts were so less that they were actually that every judge had more than around i think 3.5 lakh cases pending for every judge 
they spend more on judiciary they spend more on building courts and today the and today the case of that country is much better than it was 2 3 decades back does that satisfy your question ma'am yeah i guess so thank you anyone i think not all right shashwat you have the floor thank you ma'am i believe the man goes next no actually we are going I, i think the four team first like the whole four team goes and then the whole against team goes back to back after me shashwat back to back yeah shashwat ke uh, after right. shashwat we have hamza then no after i think we have the entire four team in delhi against team is that what iman has stated sorry uh you said that basically all of us will go then all of you will go right yeah all right thank you give me one second please as our honorable opener ali murtada has said it is not the privileged or the underprivileged that have a problem it is the fact that the privileged are always gotten more than the underprivileged this is clearly seen in the examples of vijay malia and salman khan where where in their power their fame their money and their their uh, their control over other people has allowed them to get away with anything they can do vijay malia has stolen from our stolen from the country of india and has done so much more that is not so that because of the laws that he has control over because of the fact that he has power over the people over the political system over the people who create the laws and the fact that vijay malia could easily go through the laws because of the fact that there are more laws which are so vague that it is not possible to uh, interpret the uh, uh, and because of the vagueness it is possible to interpret them in thousands of thousands of ways so is it not because of this that there is a gap between the privileged and the underprivileged over the law, over law which in every constitution says that everyone is equal under the law does it not say that vijay malia does it not show that vijay malia and salman khan who has who salman khan who had who has uh, drunk, disorderly and drunkenly driven over count or over, uh, over many people i would not say the number of people or uh, number of times because uh, let's not get into that and secondly let us look at the other aspect of this state the statement it says the statement says more laws less the justice now let's take the opposite of this less laws more the justice the country does not need many laws but rather more concise laws which paint an accurate picture of what the law is trying to attack if we have more concise laws that exact leave no space for interpretation of any sort that would that not bring up justice would that not bring up equality amongst the people and if we have fewer vague laws it is possible to get more justice people are put on trial for long periods of time and there there are two possible cases one trial by media as if people do not know the person is hounded by the media and his or her privacy of life is value, uh, is violated the media gives its own decision which is not legally binding but causes great trouble to the parties involved for example we can take uh, take the example of the money laundering case by the former former home minister he was he was convicted by the media he was legally he was hounded by every media channel in india and possibly a few international uh, channels as well and in the end what did the state decide that he was not guilty he was innocent on all on on all cases and secondly because they put on trial for such long periods uh, periods for different laws which say the same thing in different terms and their vagueness and the reason of and because of their vagueness this put on uh, put a try for the same crime this becomes repetitive and because of this principle because of the principle de- double jeopardy which means that the person cannot be uh, which means that the person cannot be try put on trial for the same crime again and again or the same law again and again we have different laws for the same thing which is obviously not possible or right the, uh, for example you can again take uh, as uh, ali as our opener ali has said the nirbhaya case which is extremely state for the past with definite it went on for almost 8 years because of this and rightly so were the accused served the rightful punishment of being hanged the point isn't that they were served justice but rather the amount of time it took for our for our system to get the right justice served 
it is this is mainly due to the fact that our laws are too vague and too open for interpretation thirdly because of the number of various laws that say the same thing again and again and again one person is piled upon the number of laws that he has done for example you can be uh, said uh, put be put upon trial for sedition and defamation against the government the both are for the same thing they both are saying that you have done something that is against the government now they both carry different weightages in terms of law and jurisdiction is that not putting more problem to the people to the country and to the person who is probably is most probably innocent i'd like to say in the end that long and cum it's that advocation and jurisdiction is a long and cumbersome pro process we need to hire advocates we need to have hire law specialists and a common man is definitely not able to pay all that money right think of it this way a common man who earns probably a um, meager wage cannot easily spend that much money justice denied is justice uh, denied justice delayed is justice denied thank you Uh, hi shashwat um, i have a question for you so don't sure. you think we need more laws to curb the privilege like you stated salman khan vijay malia all of these people have gone uh, away with you know they were gone away with so many big crimes that they've committed whereas the underprivileged don't have any laws that protect them do, do you think that we should add evolve our laws and add more laws that curb the privilege of these politicians and these power hungry individuals uh that's exactly my point it's a nice question but that's exactly my point because of the fact that we have so many laws that say different things they have been made across time uh, across time we have had our our country got independence in in 1949 right it was its constitution started like its uh, independence started in 1949 and the number of laws that we have carried from the british era to post independence which said the same thing again and again right allows them to be open to interpretation interpret uh, interpretation again and again and by having concise laws that that say and state what is right and what is wrong and the power that people and the underprivileged and the privileged have under the uh, under the uh, the egalitarian eye of law that prevents the privilege from abusing the privilege is what we need we do not need more laws we need concise laws um i'm sorry to interrupt but shashwat shashwat her question was about um having more laws for underprivileged people rather than just concise oh. laws even the laws for the privileged oh. are concise so can you please uh, clarify on this point thank uh, you ma'am before he starts i have uh, another yes, question uh, i'm so sorry shashwat before uh, you start uh, don't but the you have stated that there are laws that they just need to be concise and more in place but might i remind you that we don't have laws to curb these powers so how do you suggest that we how do you suggest how do you suggest the solution to that because we don't have the laws we need to add more laws and when we add the laws we have to repeat that uh, i'm so sorry you yeah. repeat that your voice got cut yeah yeah so sorry so uh, uh i was just saying that we we don't have laws to curb the power of these politicians we don't have laws which will which will give us the power to correct a prime minister we don't have laws which will help us go against the government and help us other than protesting we don't have any other law that will help the underprivileged or the common man so we i think we really need to add more laws and when we add these new laws i think we have to make them concise because i don't think we have existing laws and hence we have to add them and that's my question to you what is your solution to it uh iman uh, please just ask your question you said that we do not have uh, powers or we do not have powers to uh, you know curb the powers of the prime minister or the president could you just uh, affirm or deny that sorry Uh, please affirm or deny you saying that we do not have uh, powers or like we as the people okay, do not so have powers. Let, let me reiterate. The power of the prime minister, the president. Let me reiterate. Uh, uh, that. that. Yeah, one second. Let me reiterate that question. We do have powers, but it'll take it'll take another generation to get. If I start that case, it'll take another generation for me to get there. All right. As you have said that we, it will take another generation. Why is this happening? Because we have so many laws that are. Diverse in every way, for the same thing. 
and as you said we do not have concise laws and you think that we need to have modern laws which are more concise why do we have so many laws from uh, from beforehand from past that say the same thing again and again do you, do you not think it's time to reduce those laws as well it is not just time to have more laws again and again let's cut those laws down let's try to have more law, uh, have less laws that provide more justice let's have laws that provide and give people the power and not just the people but the gov- the legislative the, the jurisdiction the sorry not the legislative the jury the 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 law making not law making law protecting powers such as the uh the supreme court the high courts and the normal courts let's give them more power over this it is not that we do not have uh, we it is not that we have less laws let's have more uh, let's, sorry let's not have more laws let's say the same thing again and again let's have less laws that are concise that are more elaborate and which provide a, a pinpoint interpretation of it let us not leave anything to interpretation because that is where the problem arises yes are you still not answering my question just a small point i would like to add to shashwat sharma uh, sir that you said that um, should we make different laws for underprivileged no iman we shouldn't i because said we should, I, we should make we such, no because we should make such laws that uh, the such laws which applies to both privileged and underprivileged equally we are not needed to make separate laws for underprivileged separate laws for middle class and separate laws for the privileged one law which goes on everyone one law which covers all the which all the classes box of people of all walks of life that's it it would be yeah, great if uh, it would be great if other people from uh, the team who is four can also join in to answer instead of only two people right now thank you yes uh, ahead as ali said uh yeah uh, i want to just Oh okay. uh, yeah just before just before i would just like to add that just before dwelling uh, deeper into this particular topic uh, which iman has talked about uh, about uh, having more laws for the underprivileged i would like uh, iman to first listen to uh, our another speaker's uh, speech about corruption and perhaps if then she has uh, the same question she can again raise it raise it yes okay no issue uh, she can go ahead as as ali had said if we have other laws for the underprivileged it is obviously wrong for example we can take the sorry we can take the example of the reservation bases that we have it is because of reservation that many people who have worked hard and tirelessly for their right to study in that university or, or in that school or to for that job they did not get it if we have such law for the underprivileged it is not equality or equity that we are giving them it is straight up there again we have seen countless times now in modern that people these underprivileged people or the caste bases that we have these underprivileged people are abusing this power this uh, this system and they're getting what they have right now uh, shashwat can you please give me any proof that where underprivileged people are abusing our system and another another point is that i'm not talking about you know i'm not saying that the pri- privilege already have you know the privilege already have the means uh to fight for justice i am saying that the underprivileged don't have any laws or the means for to fight to fight for justice and hence we should add laws introduce laws that help them because they are they the reason they are called the underprivileged is because they don't have the means and resources okay um i think sahaj mentioned that he would like somebody to talk about corruption uh, to kind of answer iman's question uh who whoever is that person please uh, please take the floor uh ma'am actually she is the last speaker so perhaps uh, if uh, it can be done in the podcast okay. later on okay yes yes sure thank you uh good uh, good evening ma'am um and uh, our fellow debaters um to uh, as uh, ali said the more law, we have more rules in this uh in our legislature but uh how concrete are these laws how why, what is the necessity of these laws how many unnecessary laws are being presented by our judiciary to the government to the public which uh aren't even necessary in our economy or uh, in our world as of now so i would like to uh, further explain our thought process in uh, the in evaluating some examples of unnecessary laws the governments of few countries have introduced so uh, if we take for india for example the 
Maintenance and Welfare of Parents and uh, uh, Senior Citizens Act of 2007. This law criminalizes the non-payment of, ma of maintenance uh, or imprisonment of the pair of sons or daughters who cannot afford the maintenance of their parents or senior citizens and imprisons them for uh, having don't, uh, not having the ability to pay for their parents. Another such example would be the Prison Act for 1894. The law stipulates whipping with a light return. The Supreme Court, even though it, the Supreme Court called it barbaric and objectionable back in 1979, yet this law still exists. Uh, another such act would be, and uh, many laws overlap. That is, uh, even in the same field of operations, two laws, two laws abiding with the same regulations um, covering the same topics are still existing in our uh, statutes and uh, for example if I give the chemical weapons uh, convention act this law and uh, another such act uh, which would be the weapons of mass destruction um, and the delivery system these two laws although they cover the same topic of and of chemical weapons and explosive substances yet these two laws are having uh, different minimal sentences and different sentences of uh, prison imprisonment um, for example if I take another country France um, it's uh, it, these unnecessary laws that are being introduced into our government are curtailing us from giving laws to the more important or more necessary necessary um, uh, laws to be introduced. Uh, it's illegal to have it's illegal to have unlimited and limited ketchup in French school cafeterias. Um, French lawyers, uh, French law requires forty percent of music played on private radio stations to be of French origin. Uh, it's illegal for French parents to provide per, to prevent uh, adult children from getting married. A 19th century French law states that it is prohibited that a pig owner can name his pig a Napoleon. In USA, such laws still exist as well. Uh, in Illinois, it's illegal for a minor to drink in case he or she is enrolled in a culinary program. Um, in Arkansas, it is strictly prohibited to uh, pronounce the country's name, the state's name wrong, and it is uh, mentioned to pronounce it with the three syllables with three syllables and with the silent a in uh, connecticut for example a pickle uh, cannot be sold unless it bounces uh, in georgia it's illegal to uh, eat fried chicken without with uh, anything but your hands uh, on a more serious note um, the un has given an example of the environmental laws that have been introduced in the general assessment week uh, it had found that the weak enforcement to be a um, uh, the weak enforcement to be a global trend that is exacerbating um, uh, environmental threats. Despite prolific growth in the environmental laws and uh, international aid being provided to uh, countries with um, uh, and providing them with over a thousand international environmental agreements, yet uh, the in UN has not seen any prolific growth or effectiveness of these laws in uh, helping our environment and. Uh, uh having uh any effect impactful fact uh on our environment as such uh another such uh so i would just like to end by saying that although uh these laws uh we as we all know won't be followed by even the most citizen even by the most abiding citizen of uh any country uh we need to we need to um, make sure that uh the rules by doing this we make sure the effectiveness of the rules becomes obsolete so the judicial system, by implementing such rules, uh, implies that the the laws stating uh, the laws which are of unnecessary importance or uh, unimportant in our judicial system is being implemented, whereas the laws which are needed by the government are being uh, are being curtailed. So, any uh, questions? Yes. Uh, Hamza, uh, my first question still remains unanswer unanswered. And yes, my second question, for one second, Mantan, let me complete. Uh, my first question still remains unanswered. Second uh, point two is that how does this justify the statement that uh, more laws mean less question. justice? It's, by implementing such laws, you're stating that how are we curtailing the unprivileged laws? If these laws still exist in our society, that means that these laws will still be introduced in our society for, in, for the future. Is that correct or not? And uh, if these laws still exist in our society... I'm so sorry, could you repeat people, that? I wasn't clear. If these laws exist in our society as of now, uh, who can say that these laws won't exist in the future of our society? Now, by stating by and if, by introducing introducing these laws, the UN even says environmental laws, 
even though we have international agreements, over a thousand international agreements, environmental laws, yet they have no effectiveness in our role. And if we have more concise, more elaborate, more um, impactful laws, which explain everything in detail, or at least help if we have at least a 50 a better better yet than 100 laws that have no effectiveness and 20 laws that have at least a small impact on our environment that would be better as for me you have any other question yeah. hello hamza uh, yes can you just please repeat the last sentence of your speech the last sentence of my speech last sentence um by these laws being introduced in our society, the rules that the laws that are being introduced further on will become obsolete or will become underestimated or disrespected for. That's what the last sentence would be. You have any question so on that? So don't you think we need more laws which are concise? Again, the same question goes here. I just said that to Iman, but more concise laws is what I'm saying. Instead of introducing these um, uh, unnecessary or un under unimportant laws, instead of making uh, instead of doing that, we can have more elaborate laws that, uh, like Iman said, help the underprivileged in uh, fighting against the privileged people, or helping the environment, or helping the world, or helping globalization, or helping the economy, or helping businesses, small businesses to uh, enact in the future. All right, but, that's that for my. First question. Yes, I have another question then. Yes. So you're saying that you want to remove the old laws from existence than amend them to be more precise. What what is well, the question? Well I, I don't think I don't think we are sticking to the topic right now. And we are just yeah, meeting yeah. around uh, so I will request uh, uh, all of you to please move on with the debate. Okay ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. For your time. I think the next speaker should start. Yes, uh, hello. I'm going to talk about the political motives why, uh, behind why, like how the government can use it to its advantage when there are more laws. Democracy represents a system of tyranny. So the majority of the state's uh, legal monopoly, they use, they introduce more and more laws to use it to their advantage. And this also gives them a right to enforce their will over minority groups. It continuously creates laws. What happens is continuously creating laws turns in turn makes us all criminals because the more number of laws, the more cautious we need to be. This is backed up by the court from Beria, which says, show me the man and I'll show you the crime. So the more and more laws that are that keep introducing, it turns all of us into criminals. And this can be an advantage to the government because then when all of us are criminals, they can selectively choose and enforce their laws. It, give, it gives them an upper hand and rubber stamp uh, uh, authoritative states, they are changed by introducing more laws. Rule of law, which ensures justice, is being turned into rule by law, which is using laws to their advantage. Next, the prosecutors and police forces are also given immense power because the more and more laws which already cover previous subjects are introduced, prosecutors are given more power as they can uh, overcharge either horizontally or vertically. They can uh, put the defendant under an under pressure to accept plea bargains. This gives them immense power and they also have an advantage. Thus, it's in a it disadvantage to common citizens. Common people need to walk on eggshells when there are more laws introduced. Why? Because every more laws are introduced because previous laws were vague. So they introduce more laws in uh, specifying more conditions and covering more areas. And when everything is covered under the law, it's inevitable for a citizen to live without breaking a law. I would like to conclude our entire speech by saying, the more laws there are, the less freedom to individuals. 
the more laws there are it's less hard it is more harder to enforce all of them the more laws there are there are more chances of breaking them the more laws there are the more people get away with breaking them so when all this is happening where is justice thank you any questions uh, iman i hope this satisfied your answer okay i think our team should start ma'am yeah okay our first speaker can go ahead uh good evening ma'am my, my my camera right now has a problem so i'll just go on with what i have now to say more laws and less justice what does the quote even mean does it mean that due to more laws less justice important how is it even relevant to the current age let's talk about the person who quoted it julius cicero he was a philosopher in an era where aristocrats and dictators ruled the world whose word was the law and slavery was as prevalent as child eating an ice cream in the current age and women had no rights whatsoever there has been an exponential development in our justice system from a time when men women and children were executed on the basis of blind selection unscientific evidence and witchery we have moved on into a system where people are given justice based on scientific evidence forensics and equality and due to the diversity of the people and the division of the people into so many classes so many social groups and classes we need laws we need more laws to protect them to punish them and to prevent them from being exploited we need and the justice system is transforming not only to punish the convicted but also to rehabilitate them as ali said about the statistics in india right now there are 470 articles and is considered to be one of the most articulated and most thorough constitution in the world yet as he said there are 16000 sorry 60000 cases pending in the supreme court 44.75 lakh cases pending in the high courts and then 3.14 crore cases pending in various subordinate and district uh, district courts now is it due to the shortage of manpower i really don't think so the reason is there are 16734 justices in india and approximately 13 lakh lawyers to provide legal aid to the people now so why are the cases being still pending i say it is because of the lack of laws and we need more laws to curb the power of these politi politicians and industrialists we need laws which are made by the people for the people and these laws are the ones which will protect the lower classes and as again the opposition said it takes so long for the justice system to give its verdict that the person is either dead or he withdrew his case with no lack of manpower i say that this is happening only because of due to the lack of laws and to end as a species we are ever evolving and we need to amend the existing laws and add more laws for the ability to provide everybody and the ever changing society thank you any question i have a question yes i have a question as well aditi go ahead yeah okay so you said that we need more laws 
because right now there is a lack of law but as you previously mentioned there are 470 articles and yet 60000 cases when there are 470 articles covering so many areas of of the law of crimes yet there are still 60 more than 60000 cases how does in adding more laws introducing more laws help in enabling justice uh, can i answer this question i'm so sorry yeah sure uh so aditi the question uh, the answer to your question would be that the reason uh, these cases are pending the reason that we have 60000 pending 60000 cases pending after a budget of 280 crore rupees just for the judiciary with 13 lakh lawyers i think there is a lack of law because we don't have the law to fast forward these cases because we don't have the law that will allocate these people these cases the perfect time and we don't have the law that gives some cases priority and that is the reason we believe that we need more laws to protect these cases to fast forward these cases so that the, the justice imparted is faster uh, imana i would like to uh, again ask something so the more laws we introduce to counter uh, these uh, evils the government right now political powers government is using them to their advantage finding loopholes in these laws thus just introducing more laws will be an added advantage to them because again they get more laws to their advantage i don't think it's really going to help the underprivileged yeah uh, i would like to answer this question in my speech i believe i said that we need law more the laws which are made by the people and for the people so the people can make law so that they can get justice um. for the next uh, could i question you on that uh, i'd like to ask, ask question you that first of all um laws cannot be directly made by the people the people elect the uh, people elect the people in the power in power but these people in power abuse this what do you have to say about that if you want to, if, wouldn't it be right to have lesser laws in that case which are more concise and Can which provide better short um shashwat so there ought to be laws to you know there ought to be laws to provide for you know a uh, pr- provide prote- protection from passing unjust laws there have to be more laws to curb the power of these politicians don't you think rather than completely scraping it making equal for everybody because equality can never exist there will always be an upper class there will always be a middle class and over, there will always be a lower class irrespective of what you do because they, there are developed countries in the whole wide world and there isn't a single country where a lower class doesn't exist and we um doesn't exist so all we're saying is that we need more laws to curb the power of the politicians to curb the power of these industrialists you know we need to add more laws you know we are the largest democracy in the world um iman could you just repeat your first sentence so your first few uh, sentences uh uh my first sentence uh, was that we we need more laws to curb the power of these politicians because no that was not your okay. first uh, sentence you were talking about upper class and lower class okay so um let me uh, i'm so sorry i didn't remember so uh i was talking about that that there will be always always be an upper class there'll always be a middle class and always be a low, lower class we can definitely strive for an equal economy for an uh, you know uh, for a uh, economy for a country where there is equality and equity for all but i think it will take another 500 years to get to that place and i think you know because of the current situation the current setbacks and the setback that we will get because we are an evolving economy we don't know when there will be climate change when we don't know when there'll be disasters which can cause the people to go back into poverty which can cause we don't even know we, we don't even know when people like you know if you take uh, the ambanis he was a seller uh, i'm and- sorry to interrupt iman uh, shashwat asked you to repeat your first sentence only okay i'm so sorry <laughs> So my first okay, uh, that was all I wanted I had all right uh, thank you I had a few other questions to uh, Shiva if that's okay yeah. Shiva sure yeah all right uh, you said in your opening sentences that dic- uh, that the person who said the sentence lived in a bygone era where dictators monarchs uh, existed and ruled do you not believe this do not exist and anymore and in the case of Saudi Arabia where there is less and which is why there is more justice 
can you come again because you are live all okay, right uh, apologies uh, in your uh, in your opening say, statements you said that dictators monarchs and sorry uh, apologies in your first first statements you said that uh, the person who said the court uh, the more the more laws you have the less justice you have lived in a bygone era where dictators and monarchs existed and uh, or ruled uh, ruled with an iron fist right yeah so, uh, do you still not believe that uh, dictators and monarchs do not exist and the fact that okay let's take the example of a monarchical country such as saudi arabia the laws have lessened because there is there is more justice come again in the country uh, okay first of all uh, bygone era uh, your uh, first quote was in a by, uh, about the person in bygone no, no, era no i got all that uh, the last sentence please right all right uh, in the in the state uh, let's take an example of a monarchical country such as saudi arabia the kingdom of saudi arabia the earlier laws there were many laws which curbed the rights of people uh, let's uh, the sharia law if people don't know where Uh, it curbs the rights of many people and women. Apologies if I am insulting anyone because I do not know the Sharia law completely. This is what I have read from multiple articles, and I apologize if I have offended anyone's sentiment. But in the country of Saudi Arabia, the laws have lessened due to which there is more justice. What do you have to say about that? Okay. Uh, Shashwat, I'm going to answer your question here. Uh, in the Sharia law, uh, our, there's there's not enough laws in our country that that the woman could could enforce in it you know, in our country. the The problem here is, uh, let's take an let's take an example like women in our country cannot cannot. Uh, women need to be given. Uh, women need to be given laws and. and to be given the right to divorce her husband under certain circumstances which is allowed in other countries in other middle eastern countries but is not allowed in our country so what we are saying is we need more law we need more laws in our country to enforce such cases um uh all right uh, okay i had another question i had two more questions rather wait can i ask my what are the chances question? of the under Right. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, we were talking about Sharia laws, and then we moved to another question. Uh, I would like someone who is answering, who's from the answering team right now, to please uh, conclude their answers regarding uh, the first question of uh, Shash Shashwat. Okay, uh, let me do it. Uh, so, Sashwat, number one, I think you should get your facts right about the Sharia law. I think it's the country that you should blame and not the law. I think you know people who have read it. The Sharia law has more rights to women. Has given rights to women five hundred cent five hundred years ago than we have in India now. That's one point. And could you repeat your question again? I'm so sorry. Um, Saudi Arabia the laws have lessened has provided more justice. Uh, I think Saudi Arabia is evolving as a country, like as all of us have evolved. If you take India, for instance, sati was very prevalent. Now we don't have sati; it was banned by adding a law to the constitution. And I think so is Saudi Arabia evolving and understanding how justice works and how the rights work. And they are adding law. For instance, uh, recently they have added a law which gives women. Previously, they didn't have uh, women didn't have the rights to go around freely because of the prevalent rape and uh, rape culture in their country. Now that they have rectified that situation, they have introduced a new law which gives women rights to drive, to work, to work and go out alone, which was not there previously. So that's me answering your question. I believe that we may, we need more laws. We believe that we need more laws. to provide justice for everybody uh i would like to point out that we started uh, by shiva's presentation talking about more laws and uh, to what we already have and now we are moving to specific countries and uh, specific laws it would be great if we stop if we avoid doing that because we are not very knowledgeable about all the laws of different countries so it's better if we stick to talking about laws and justice in general thank you thank you ma'am All question to you, Shiva. 
well uh yeah. mentioned about uh, indian constitution 470 articles one of the best constitution we respect yes yet uh, dr was ready to burn the constitution well coming to my uh, uh, you know uh, concise question you mentioned that manpower in judiciary is not a problem uh, according to the law ministry 2018 they had there is a shortage of 6000 judges in supreme uh, in high court and shortage of 5000 judges in the lower courts what's your reaction uh, to okay, add to like that it. i just like to add to that okay no, wait, let, let uh, it be let it be you know uh, yeah ali uh, i had uh, add another question with the add it to the answer will be deflected the then the answer will be deflected to your question so let uh, let the all right all right this one yeah. all right Yeah, tell the question again. So uh, you mentioned that uh, um, uh, uh, the shortage of manpower is a problem in Indian judiciary. But then, according to the uh, uh, the uh, law ministry's report, uh, there there's a shortage of six thousand judges in the in high court and shortage of five thousand judges in the lower court. What's your reaction on this report? Okay, I'll say like this. What if we didn't need those six thousand judges? If we could add a single law, could you be a bit more specific? So I'm like this. Uh, if you add law, the work gets done faster. If it gets done faster, the case, the number of pending cases reduces. If the number of case, pending cases reduces, what is the meaning of that shortage? So instead of uh, giving them justice, you're just changing the law. How 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 is that helpful? How is that beneficial? Instead, I am not saying another law. You add to you add to Ali's question, and you are just substituting uh, uh, substituting justice with another law, and saying that justice has been given. How is that practical? Uh, to add to Ali's question, to add to Ali's question, uh, even if a person gets uh, you know served by the justice, he is still taken to the uh, to a uh, to a court. Even if he is imprisoned, he is taken to a court first. So, if you do not clear that uh, shortage, so how is that going to help? A mere law wouldn't help that. To add to Ali's uh, statement. Exactly. Um, one single law will not help that. You need more than that. Just mentioned that one single law will be helpful. He's saying uh, that multiple laws, that? even if we implement multiple laws, they still have to be taken to a court to a judge. If we have a shortage of judges, how will they get justice? Even if we implement new laws. New laws won't just. Uh, yeah, just I'm sorry yeah, to yeah. interrupt, but uh, I we both we all understood the question of Ali and uh, Shiva. Your answers need accuracy right now. That's what we are all expecting from you. And uh, just to clear myself, uh, Shiva, when I said add a uh, one mere law wouldn't be, uh, would be, I meant that as you said that if we add one more law, that is the one which I was referring to. Just for your information. Here, by adding laws, the thing is, it gets the work gets done faster by the same number of people. Is what I'm trying to say. Is it clear? Shiva, sure, there are just 19 judges per 10 lakh people. How can how can you substitute those? Uh, how can you substitute one law to to deliver justice to that to the another 10 lakh people? And, All right. Uh, Fine, fine, Shiva, you have uh, it's your last uh, answer for this question. Uh, if you're not okay. able to answer it with accuracy, uh, we will um, move on to the next part of the debate. Ma'am, can I answer it for him? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, to Ali's question, you guys are absolutely right. by saying that you know uh, you know if we need more justice we need more lawyers we need more courts but you are also forgetting the fact that we do have panchayats in every village there is a panchayat which sits down to provide justice to the basic needs and then the case goes on to the higher courts iman panchayats are not part of a judicial system panchayats are. are not part of the no they aren't According they are a part of the legislative system they aren't part of the judicial system i'm talking about judiciary and not legislature agreed agreed uh, agreed the house uh, panchayat is giving you justice agreed uh, but on a, when you actually visit these villages when you actually know what the, what goes on that's what happens they solve 
issues in the villages regarding crime regarding the legislation that's that's my answer to your question they solve overall issues including the crime and when they think that the the issue can go on to can go uh, further on to another court that's when they send it and, and that is yeah. there a is there a panchayat in your community iman yes uh, in the oh is it yes panchayat yes panchayat panchayat exists only in rural areas not in urban i have a farm how do you know where i live or what in what urban i have in urban okay excuse me uh, yeah. ali yeah, and yeah, iman uh, i just want to clear i would like to uh iman uh, ali and shiva i would like to outline that we are talking about laws in general uh we are not talking about laws in specific communities so please stick to the question and the answer based on general laws right right uh so ali please can you repeat your question once the original question like so uh, yeah shiva so you have stated i think guys i think it's so time many, to move yeah, on to the rest yeah. of the speeches and then okay, we'll go to the yeah it's fine if you no, i'll just tell my solution i'll just tell my solution no, no, my no. The solution is there are 15.14 lakh lok adalats in india they're not being utilized properly Okay um Shiva I think you are just stating uh sentences right now and uh we would like to proceed with the next part of the debate uh, so that we don't lose time and uh we can have a different perspective and a version of the of the overall debate and since our time is nearly up I would like you to move on to that person in your team who has not spoken at all and to probably give an overview of what your team supports yes so ma'am you want to skip all of our speeches like the rest of the speakers because because we have three more speakers to go then we will go on till midnight i think ma'am it will be three more uh, speakers from the opposition team and uh, one speaker from from the four team okay so i, I will yes. give each one of you 2 minutes to speak from each team whoever has not spoken 2 minutes and ma'am what we can do is we can limit we can we can cut all of the pois and they can address all of their issues in their rebuttal instead of doing the pois yes POIs. agreed agreed yeah. yes go ahead yes uh, this is anirudh reddy from class 12 uh, i'm going to elaborate on why lo more laws are required in the society pertaining to the society's current condition in relation to women women only in the in the economy and the society The status of women in India has been subject to many changes over the span of recorded Indian history. Crimes such as rape, acid throwing, dowry killings, honor killings, and the forced prostitution of young girls has been reported in India. I'm going to elaborate on the society's condition in relation to women and how they are affected. The, Na the National Crime Records Bureau reveals that a crime against a woman is committed every three minutes. A woman is raped every twenty-nine minutes. a dowry death occurs every 77 minutes and one case of cruelty is committed by either the husband or a relative of the husband occurs every 9 minutes this occurs despite the fact that women in india are legally protected from the crimes committed against them in india the male female sex ratio is skewed dramatically in favor of men many experts suggest the higher number of men in india can be attributed to female infanticides and sex selective abortions Ultrasound scanning though useful in many ways often re reveals the sex of the baby allowing pregnant women to decide to abort female fetuses this practice is usually considered as the main reason for the change in the ratio of male to female children being born in 1994 minute, anirudh yes ma'am in 1994 the indian government passed a law banning sex identification of fetuses through ultrasound scans and also expressly banned For and for and forbade doctors or any other person from providing that information to the parents. In practice, this law is widely ignored, and levels of abortion on female fetuses still remain high, and sex ratio of birth keeps getting more skewed. And in since the 1980s, rape in India has rape in India has been described as one of India's most common crimes committed against women. Since the 1980s, women's rights groups lobbied for the marital rape to be declared unlawful, but the Criminal Law Act of 2013 still maintains exemption by stating an exception clause under Section 375 that sexual intercourse or sexual acts by a man with his own wife 
the wife not being under 15 years of age is not rape laws have proved to be laws have proved to be very helpful for instances in case of triple talaq also known as talaq e bidat which is a form of islamic divorce whereby a muslim man could legally divorce his wife by pronouncing talaq three times in oral written or more recent electronic form the man okay. need not okay anirudh uh, yes, your time I'm is done. up i would like another yes, member of your team to speak now please yeah i would just like to end by saying that we need more laws safeguarding women's interests yeah thank you yeah good evening everyone uh, this is sairam i'm going to elaborate about what my fellow mates have said there ought to be a law against passing unjust laws we need to have more laws to curb pol- politicians industrialists and powerful people from getting over with their crimes murders using money using money and corrupting the law system and the only thing the poor are left is injustice for instance the best example we can take here is george floyd's case a 46 year old man who was cruelly killed in minneapolis united states during an arrest for allegedly using a counterfeit bill in this case we have clearly seen how a policeman has used his power to exploit the poor and other less privileged people the government didn't had proper laws for situations like this therefore the old world had to react comment and made this an international issue also lgbt community and its laws is another aspect being a homosexual is as natural as being heterosexual they do have right of dignity and free of discrimination so we see in our everyday life where people like these get discriminated in society what is the reason for this it's simple that the government doesn't have enough laws and amendments all these devastating examples clearly show that we have laws but not enough for the right justice for all communities caste creed religion and sex thank you i'm the last speaker okay so i think all my team has talked about uh, during this whole they have provided reasons of why we need more laws in different countries in general throughout the world and you know we have we haven't talked about particular countries like our opposition team where they have stated you know uh, is- uh, related uh, issues related to saudi arabia or the american you know uh, as they have stated so i i just like to say and i just like to close the speech uh, by saying that women and children still don't have proper rights in india domestic rape when when a girl child is 15 year old in india i am talking about india because that's the country i can accurately state about so in india a 15 year old is get, getting married to some uh, from 40 year old guy and when he rapes her they say that just because she was married it's it's domestic it's not even considered as rape so these cases don't even get to go into the court uh, second is the second point is how more laws should be added for the safety of women not only for the safety of women women but also the safety of men because there are throughout the world there are barely any laws that provide safety for men in our country because they're considered so strong you know we don't have any laws that provide for the safety of men or for the safety of LG, lgbt community from from uh, the power hungry individuals or from the law itself one second there ought to be a law against passing unjust laws okay so i'd like to say the same thing that we don't have enough laws to curb the passing of unjust laws in our country you know as a wait one second there is no provision that uh, protects our, our the, there is no provision that protects the underprivileged there is no provision that protects women there is no provision that protects the lgbt community thoroughly hence we need to add more laws in still because these you know if you th- uh, if you think of adding you know if you say that they need to be more concise with the largest democracy in the world we have concise laws we don't we don't have laws that exist for the safety of men i think you can look the subject we don't Your have time is up iman i'm so sorry i would like someone from the other team to speak now ma'am, can i just conclude ma'am yes give me 10 seconds just let me conclude all i want to say is that we're a evolving species we need to evolve our laws and add more laws more laws means more justice more laws means more inclusion
Ma'am, I think we're done. I think we have to have the rebuttal speech. Um, yes, please go ahead. Okay. So I'm the rebuttal, uh, and I would be uh, uh, essentially targeting uh, the entire opposition with my speech, and as well uh, as stating, uh, as well as going as far to state some problems or some clarifications that need to be made on this topic. To begin with, firstly, um, I would like to draw the emphasis on implementation of laws and not just having more laws. So in India, we have three separate uh, uh, bodies, which is the uh, executive, judiciary, um, and the uh, par parliament, which is the uh, legislative. So there's a division over here. And I'm pretty sure that the people who are making the laws are not the ones who are implementing it. So. Uh, the, the lapse in a particular country does not necessarily point out to having um, a few number of laws or inadequate laws. It can also mean that the country is not adequately implementing these laws. Secondly, uh, many of um, uh, the people in the opposition have spoken about corruption. I would again like to point out that corruption is more relatable to poor execution. Because uh, when we have more and more laws, it invests more power into these people. Um, just like um, uh, another point I would like to highlight was that uh, how Iman spoke about uh, underprivileged uh, and that we need to give underprivileged uh, more laws. So in relation to my previous point, uh, already we are facing problems uh, where we have corrupt officials uh, who are uh, uh, chewing away the money of the funds which are, uh, uh, we, we, you know, your the time funds is up, Sahaj. Someone uh, else from your team, uh, please. I would, ma'am, since I'm the last uh, speaker, can okay, I Okay, okay, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so I'll just quickly wrap this around, uh, quickly stating my points. Uh, underprivileged, having more laws than underprivileged will surely employ, uh, will surely imply more money eating. Um, again, uh, Iman also stated that underprivileged uh, are underprivileged because of less laws. Wait, but the Indian constitution clearly states that there is no discrimination. The laws do not discriminate. They are underprivileged because they have less financial resources and they have low per capita income. Also, as uh, Hamza highlighted, that uh, he was he was particularly trying to highlight how um, the nations who have gone for implementing more laws, how the how the privacy of the individual citizens have been affected. There are more number of laws which, as soon as the laws keep on increasing, it goes into the domains of the individual citizens, and and soon, as Hamza mentioned, they will lose their privacy. Um, um, a few things that I would like to point out for, for uh, Shiva's speech, where he said that the law needs to be made uh, for the people uh, and by the people. He was particularly considering India, so I would uh, like to talk in respect to India, that uh, India is a democratic country. You are the one who is electing these people. So essentially, indirectly, these laws are made by the people and for the people. Uh, that's it. This is where I would like to wrap. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else uh, uh, is going to... Yes, question? The issue, one, no, we can't uh, do questions after the rebuttal, Ali. The yeah. questions only uh, were after the POIs. So uh, I'm the rebuttaler, ma'am, because they had five speakers and one of our speakers backed out at the last moment. So I'm going to rebuttal their speech for my team. Okay, you have one minute. Ma'am, only one minute? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me start by saying, uh, let me start by addressing a few points uh, uh, that's, uh, that said that uh, the judiciary, I think uh, the judiciary needs to have more budget. I think we need to have, and they don't have enough lawyers in the country. We need 6,000 more lawyers. And can, can I please ask you why we need 6,000 more lawyers? We need 6,000 more lawyers because these people, most of the people in our country don't have the resources to become a lawyer. I think we should in, in, uh, in, introduce a law that provides free education for the underprivileged. Second question that uh, was asked uh, was that improvement. We need laws to curb the political power. We don't. We barely have any laws that curb the politicians. Let me reiterate that we need laws to curb their power. And uh, the fourth point is uh, countries like if you talk about you know uh, generally. Countries like a country like Syria only has about 81 articles. It, it, it's, we have 475 articles in India. A country like Syria has only 81 articles. Is the least safe country in the whole wide world. It stands number one. Hence, proving my point that we need we, uh, more justice and uh, more laws and less justice doesn't actually prove that a more uh, uh, 
what is it? So sorry. More laws means less justice. Thank you, ma'am. I'd like to continue. Okay. Uh, am I allowed to so, ask question? no. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, who who speaks next? Is it the host or is it me? Well, is it Rina Miss? You, Whoever passed it's the me? Yes, okay. So, so Rina Miss, uh, am I allowed? Yeah, yeah, sure. Do I have your time now? Okay. So it was first very fun for me to watch all of you young bloods, you know, talking about laws and justice. Uh, well, um, if you if you just go through the parliament, Indian parliament or Mauritian parliament, whichever parliament, people actually talk to each other about topics and the debate. But you guys were much more respectful compared to these people whom we call politicians. So congratulations, you were able to have a very, uh, you know, calm debate. Maybe inside you were burning, but outside you were actually keeping your calm. That is the main point. Whenever you're presenting your points, you were actually quite cool. Now coming to the, if you want, I would give you the, how do I say, the specifics of what, what I've heard and what I've seen. So, uh, Ali, Shashwat, Aditi, Sahaj, and Hamza, you were for uh, the team that was for the for the topic, the more laws, the less justice. And uh, Iman, Anirud, Shiva, and Sai, you were for the team that was against. Now, from both the, the, the teams, I saw that there was at least one or two people who are not really participative, maybe, you know, trying to interrupt, you know, just being more active and not just, not just listening. So I won't name them, but I'm just trying to tell you from both the teams, we had equal number of um, people who were not really uh, interrupting when uh, they had to. For example, I will just give an example. Uh, for example, when Shiva was trying to uh, answer and then Iman interrupted to help his her, her team member. So I would I would have expected more of that during the debate. And uh, on the presentation part, we had Ali, Shashwat, uh, Hamza, Aditi from the from the uh, team, which was four. That was a good presentation. Well done. And Sahaj, you went, well, I think you were the last speaker, right? If I'm not wrong. So good when you took the, when you kind of spoke uh, at last, you were very precise and you, you were up to the point, you were talking in general. And for the team which were against, that is uh, Iman, Anirudh, Shiva and Sai. I think I heard more of Iman throughout the debate. And um, Anirudh, Shiva, and Sai, you were there, but more in a more passive way. And uh, I would have appreciated if more members from your team could have intervened. Apart from that, um, I have taken care of the of one um, a few questions and answer sessions where Iman. Uh, asked several questions throughout the debate and uh, the team which was four was able to answer and I think there was um, there was one question where which was not accurately answered I think Iman said uh, for the next hundred generation you talk about the next hundred ge generation but it was not very accurate why you're t why you're saying that and where is it all coming from that was a bit irrelevant um, also, when um, I think there was a question asked by um, Shashwat, it lacked a bit of accuracy when I think, I don't remember what you were talking. Yeah, but I think you were talking when uh, Iman was talking about the upper class and lower class, where we talked about how laws are not really uh, working for people of the lower class, but uh, we should have more laws for them. And um, Shashwat, you asked a question which lacked a bit of accuracy for that. And uh, Ali, you talked about manpower and how we have a shortage of uh, judges. No, sorry, how we have a... Uh, you asked a question to Shiva regarding the, the manpower. 
correct? Ali, I can't see you. And um, Shiva, when you tried to answer your questions, your answers lacked accuracy. And uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to to tell you which team won. Am I supposed to do that now or shall I tell you later? Now, ma'am. Now, ma'am. Oh, ma'am. Sure. Oh, you, ma you, ha you have to... Pro what? Ma'am, before you announce anything, I, I cleared that question for them when about the judicial... Oh, about please, the don't... don't ma'am, we can I see in time. Don't ask no, 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 if you I allow me to okay, no, no, no nobody, asking anything, no answering anything. Nobody is allowed to answer or answer or justify. It was just over a, now, so let's stop. Yes, the debate is over. And I told you guys you were better off than the politicians talking about our countries in the parliament. Thank you, ma'am. So even though, even though you, you were not able to participate, even though you were very passive, now you know that how it is in the debate and you'll be able to participate more. And it's, it takes a lot of courage to actually uh, talk against or talk for something. So congratulations to all of you. And based on accuracy, based on participation for all the group, I don't like doing this, but I'm doing it. Please switch on your cameras, all of you. And um, based on all of this, I, I am um, for the more laws. Yes. Less justice. <laughs> yes, uh, I would like to give you my view, my side of the of the coin. Why I think that too. I have lived in India for the past eight years. I stayed for, in India when I was seventeen through a scholarship. I came to study there, and then I left uh, last year. So it's around nine years, and I have seen that we have so many laws, and every time I see a minister talking about something and doing something for women it's nice to know that we have laws for different sets of people but the thing is due to um due to corruption i sincerely believe that no matter how many laws you're going to create justice will always be denied so it doesn't matter if we're creating more laws to maintain to check on who is corrupting or to check on who is implementing what at the end of the day you won't realize who amongst yourself is the corrupt person. So that is my viewpoint. And uh, the team which was for it provided enough uh, information and they were more accurate and logical. That's my point.